Mademoiselle and Sassy Dizium Chanel. And today we are going to be talking about struggle love in the Haitian community. Kunya Nual Palo de how the hell do you say struggle love in Creole? Fum Kaponeg Yo Kone ki pa bon pou yo. Yo we neg la pa bon. Li pon fum sou yo. La bacho, la digizel. La fell what de von moun meli toujours rete avec negla. I think that's the best way. <laughs> explain it. Now, anything I say in Creole will most likely be repeated in English before or after, so use your motherfucking context clues. Because women m'pagé ton to be writing translations on the screen. Too much work. Creole parler, Creole co point. My Creole's not great, but motherfucker, I try. And I speak better Creole than a lot of these kids born in America, so don't fucking try me. This topic, I had to put out because I was like, you know what? Valentine's Day is coming. It's February. And I realized this too much of my Haitian woman out there that's just letting men abuse them, talk to them any type of way, and just disrespect them. And it's actually really, really annoying. Comment down below if you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you've been through it, your friend been through it, your parents been through it. Because listen, I know a lot of people, like too many people in the Haitian community that tolerate this shit, okay? Now I know, get one keep all the comment, oh, it's not just Haitian, this is not just Haitian people, this is a fucking Haitian channel. I'm tired of y'all commenting that shit. So I'm gonna shout out Haitian, I'm going to talk about things from the Haitian American experience, because I'm Haitian American. So stop that shit. I get it. It's not just Haitian people. But I'm talking about my Haitian people, because I already know that's how people are gonna come at this situation right now. There's always been this joke that I've heard growing up that now I realize it's not not really funny and it's not really a joke that Haitian woman will legitimately hate you be mad at you and catch you in some shit but still feed you and that means basically they'll accept everything that they do but they'll still take care of you as a wife should and it's crazy because I've had a lot of women come to me both my age older younger and they're like oh my man's doing this my man's doing that they're complaining but then they're like Bitch, what you mean? What you mean, Kisa Wafe? You gonna leave? What are you talking about? Like, I just be sitting there like, nigga, what? Like, you just came here to complain to me, to beat, cry, and get upset, but then you don't talk about something. Oh, well, I'm just gonna deal with it. You just don't, what do you mean? Listen. I don't care if you're married, I don't care if you're not married, I don't care. You cannot let people disrespect you. It doesn't matter if it's your spouse, your friend, your, your side piece, whatever. Because when you let people disrespect you, they're going to continue to disrespect you. I feel like a lot of Haitian women particularly feel like if they act a certain way or if they acknowledge the situation in the sense of making it seem like they're mad about it, the behavior is just going to change on its own but honestly let me tell you this right now what you allow is what will continue okay behavior does not change overnight okay i feel like in this type of situation you kind of have to address it let them know that you're not gonna stand for it wait for the change maybe wait a couple months or so and if that shit don't change then you bounce but the whole idea of staying with people for 20 to 30 years to wait for them to stop cheating stop having multiple kids which i have a video on that carded up above or linked down below all of this shit is just not okay it, it, it never will be growing up i literally seen my my dad cheated on my mom, okay? All, like, like vividly, like going to my sister's mom's house, doing all of this extra shit, and I, he would literally take me with him. And it got so bad to a point where I literally wanted my parents to get a divorce, yes. So for those of you who are probably gonna comment and probably think, oh, it's better to stay for the kids' sake so the kids can grow up with two parents from where they have a neglo, from where they have a formula, that's gonna be a team wound. For team wound, you'll get more more with papa, no la vie. Y'all need to understand when you let people disrespect you in front of your kids, okay, especially when it's the parent, if you let the mom, the dad, or whatever disrespect you in front of the kid, they pick that up and they internalize it. Your son is gonna think, oh, it's okay to treat women like this. It's okay for me to have multiple women. And the woman is gonna think, oh, okay, when I get in a relationship, the man is going to do what he does. He's always going to disrespect me. He's always going to cheat because that's how Haitian men are. That's how men are in general. I know the intention is there. The intention is, you know, I don't wanna fuck my kids up. You know, I understand, but at the same time, that does more damage because you're letting the kid 
see that person disrespect you and they internalize it and then most likely do it to other people or let other people do it to them and it does not work. I know there's one lady, okay? Them shit that chili. Vinla, vinla, them shit that. Kunya, let me tell y'all. So I know there's one lady, right? I'm not gonna say nobody's name and if you think I'm talking about you, I might, okay? So who's my palette do? Maybe, okay, put it. But probably didn't we know no comment section up for bad guys show. Probably for bad show in the comments. Just don't. I'll never forget being younger. Okay, shout outs to this person because I know they're most likely watching this because they a real friend and they watch all my shit. Her dad used to always cheat on her to the point where me and my friend legitimately caught him cheating on her mom. And then the mom came and literally busted the windows out, sis or his car, I think it was his car. I have another situation where I know this one lady where the man is so jealous that he will not let her work, okay? She sits at home depressed with two kids and if she's pregnant with another one, he doesn't let her go anywhere but church and like the laundry and maybe the supermarket, okay? She can't do anything. And he says he doesn't want her work because, oh, you know, he's so ugly and he doesn't want anyone to take him from her. And I'm dead serious, this is what he says. I heard it from his own mouth. It's absolutely ridiculous because it's funny because now, like I try to like bring up the conversation again because you listen, I'm bold. I don't care if you grow on Timon, whatever, I'm bold. Sim what I can do my deal. Okay, grow on team whatever. That's how I am. And he's just like, oh no, that's not what it is. It's not that I don't want her to work, she's just lazy. So it's like, now that he gets called out on it, he don't know what to say. Like, and it's gotten to the point where he's broken her phone with a hammer. He has severed relationships that she has with other people in the neighborhood and in her family so that she doesn't have an outlet to, you know, give the kids to, to watch for her, to go get a job or anything like that. Like, it's insane. That's abusive. Not only is it abuse, but it's toxic. It's disgusting. It's deplorable. I've never seen shit like that until I see shit like that. Like that shit is wild. I'll be damned if a nigga try to ever break my shit. I'll be damned if a nigga ever try to cheat on me and think I'm finna stay. I'll be damned if a man try to disrespect me in front of the kids. I'll be damned. And I would assume most people had that general consensus, but apparently a lot of people, especially in the Haitian community, just don't. The fact of the matter is, stand up for what you believe in, okay? Don't let people disrespect you. Don't let people tell you what it is or what it isn't. And I know there's gonna be a lot of people that try to sit here and be like, oh, well, yeah, it's all these Haitian men, Haitian men are dogs. I know a lot of women that are worse than Haitian men, like disgustingly worse, like ridiculously worse. I know women beating on men. I I know women out here beating on their Haitian husband because they know damn well they ain't got no paper so they can't go to authorities. So honestly, we need to stop hurting one another. We need to stop disrespecting one another and then expecting us to thrive in that type of environment. Expecting our kids to thrive in that type of environment because it's not gonna fucking happen. Oh my God, editing me here. I don't know how I forgot. Of course, a lot of women especially end up staying in this type of situation because they do not want to be alone. If you guys are unaware, the Haitian community and most foreign communities, in a sense, do not believe in you being single after a certain age. And they don't believe in people being bachelors or bachelorettes. But what's very interesting and what I find extremely hypocritical is like a man in the Haitian community in particular can be like 40, 50 and not be married and no one really says anything to him. But let a girl reach like even her 30s and not be married, automatically something is wrong with her. A lot of the times, a lot of these women end up accepting bullshit because it's like, oh, you know, I don't want people to talk about me. What will people think of me? I always tell y'all on this channel, the only thing Haitians care more about than they Toyota is their reputation. And for the most part, a lot of people really care about what their family thinks and what other people may perceive about them, the church, the community. You know, it's just really, really freaking ridiculous and they always chop it up to their worth being who they are with, okay? They always chop it up to, well, if I'm worthy, if I'm good enough, that means I have to have someone to share my life with. I have to have kids, I have to have this, that, and the third. When in actuality, not everyone here is meant to do that. Not everyone is meant to reproduce. Not everyone has that goal. Not everyone wants to be married. Even though I'm always going to be the type of person that believes that people should always be married before they have kids, I do understand that some people don't wanna be married and don't wanna have kids altogether. And to many Haitian people. I haven't came across any Haitian people that think differently, both American born or any other country that they're born in or migrated to. I don't know 
any Haitians that think it's okay not to be married by a certain age. Like, if you're not married by a certain age, it's, you know, your calendar, you know, your calendar is expiring or, oh, you need to get a move on. You need to have kids. You need to get married. You need to do this because at that point, it's like, what are you doing with your life? What's wrong with you that you don't have anyone? So a lot of times you end up just taking any and everything out of fear of being alone and being judged for just literally living the life that you want to live. And that's just not okay. This creates low self-esteem, creates mental health issues that most of the time go undiagnosed because we all know Haitian people, your partner, your partner mental illness, okay? If they're mentally ill, say jab, say voodoo, say loi, okay? It's never an illness. Mental illness virtually doesn't really exist, okay? They just call you crazy, okay? Ufu. It's absolutely ridiculous. Haitian people have gone through a lot and I feel like that's where a lot of this comes from. Haitian people as a whole have always been in survival They've always been in a mode of, I will take what I can get. And that's just a horrible mindset to have. It translates everywhere else. A lot of Haitian people have grown up with not much, whether they grew up in the States or they grow up in Haiti. Unless you're part of the elite class, the bourgeoisie type of class, where your family was able to send you hundreds, thousands, or send you away to school, whatever the case may be, it's different. Your experience is obviously not going to be the same as someone who genuinely didn't have anything. When you don't have anything, you end up having the mentality mentality of okay I don't care what it is I see this in like every Haitian person that I know especially those that are born in Haiti they'll be like oh like they'll literally be say if someone like cuts them in line they'll literally just let someone cut them like oh, okay well you know I'm still going to be in line I'm still going to the same place bitch no put your foot down on this channel I do documentaries about certain past presidents and instead of saying oh well yeah we know that this person is stealing money from the national treasury of Haiti they'll be like well at least feed us I mean take the money that you want but at least feed us you know y'all should care whether you guys are fed or not you should care that people are stealing you should care that people are disrespecting you you should care that people are being bad people like i i, I just can't and this mentality just genuinely has to stop because it's definitely fucking us up in the long run. Also, let's not forget just how downright embarrassing that shit is, okay? The sad part about this is when these people are sitting here beating you, cheating on you, and doing all of this shit, y'all fell with the neighbor. Okay? Y'all fell avec voisin la, the babysitter, all types of shit. It don't make no sense. It's like, bruh. Bruh. Like, I honestly couldn't stand my mom growing up because she would literally enable this behavior to hell, okay? She would sit there and tell my friend's moms, like, oh, no, I understand he did this. I understand this is horrible. I understand you're hurt, but you have to stay. You have to stay for the kids. You guys are married. Keep it here. Keep it locked, you know, through good times and bad times. <laughs> And I would just be sitting in there like I literally remember being like 10 listening to this shit like maybe I was just born with pussy bro like I just used to sit there like they go what? No leave bitch leave now this is gonna get worse like what are you talking about like my mom has been the epitome of this and she still does this to this day like I literally be sitting there listening to her like why do you keep telling people this toxic shit? Like the other day I had to call her out. I was like, we saw what did fess up. Oh no, man, your mouth. Yeah, I'm like, okay, but you'll get him one. Timon your well up for bias. I couldn't let him on your really police pulley. Like, what's gonna happen? Because there's times where these niggas out here beating their wives and doing all this extra shit. You know what the first number kids learn? 911. What you think is gonna happen? A lot of these kids are smart. A lot of people think that kids are dumb. A lot of people think kids don't pick up on things. Kids don't pay attention. Kids are not dumb. Okay, say it with me. Timun pa sot. They see this shit. They all kids see in that sense is, oh, mommy or daddy is hurt. I should call 911. They don't see all of this extra shit y'all trying to spin and trying to stay in this situation to create all this caca. They don't see that. And this was pertaining to the situation with the lady that I told you guys, um, the nigga took a hammer to her phone. I was like, so what happens if one of the kids fuck around and call 911 on this nigga? And I'm like, okay, so you sitting here telling her to stay. That happens. Now he gets arrested. Instead of her just leaving the situation altogether, they live apart, no one goes to jail. 
Don't you see how toxic that is? Don't you see how bad of advice that is? She's like, yeah, man, you're married. You're married for 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 it, lah. Kunya, let's do married. I have to next to our kid. Duh, nigga. Of course, I'm gonna leave. I'm about to let nobody disrespect me. I was looking at my mom like, of course. You don't have any ties. I told you about daddy getting a divorce. Luckily, my parents are still together, and everything definitely worked itself out. But it took years. Okay, years. And I know a lot of people have always told me, no, that's wrong. You don't say that. But I don't care because at the end of the day, it fucked with me. Hopefully, it made me a lot more hip, but I still ended up letting niggas treat me like garbage because I was like, you know what? This is probably how it's always going to be. You know, I feel like all niggas probably do this. I literally for a split second, a split time in my life thought, okay, all men cheat, all men abuse, all this, that third, or this is how Haitian people are. I had another part of me that was like, okay, well, this is how I solve my problems with violence. And there's times where dudes have betrayed me, fucked me over, and I put hands on them, not proud of it, not okay. And if that nigga would have knocked me the fuck out, I couldn't even be mad. Because I'm sitting here putting hands on people because that's what I thought. I was like, oh, okay. When a nigga disrespects me, I be his ass. When a nigga does this, this is what I do. That's not okay. It will never be okay. And if this is what you're instilling in your kids, it's wrong and it will never be right. And it's just something you guys need to think about. If you're going through it or anyone you know is going through it, please let them know. Send them this video. And of course, comment down below. Like I said, have you had this experience? Do you know anyone who has had this experience? I would love to hear your stories down below. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, and do all that. And I'm going to see y'all next time.